What is up, guys? Thanks for hopping on. Wanted to come on here and clear up a few things because there is some misconceptions regarding the Red Heifers and the prophecy, and I just want people to be, you know, know the truth on this. So we will look into this here. Let me just pull this up real quick. Thank you guys for hopping on. There's also some news in regards to uh, stuff even going on today with these Red Heifers. So. Yeah, stuff is even happening literally right now as we speak with these things. There's a council going on right now. So, just got this video in the background playing of some of the effort videos of them coming around and stuff like that. But, yeah, we'll get into it here. Guys, let me just try to fix this screen here. <clears throat> Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for hopping hopping on today. What's up, Ty, Ty Riley, Frank, Melissa, Tony? What's up? And Helen, how are you? God bless you. God bless you all. So yeah, we'll talk about this. I saw a comment on my last video, and uh, it was a Muslim, which, I mean, I've said it a billion times, but it's, it's so clear that Muhammad stole and plagiarized from the biblical stories and created the Quran. So the, the Muslims have these questions about stuff in regards to these things because some of it is in relation in the Quran too because Muhammad plagiarized it. But he said this, that uh, he's a Muslim and that he wanted some insight on the Christian perspective regarding this topic. It's interesting that some Christians believe that Jesus will return because of this ritual. Because of this ritual, why is that? So yeah, I posted my video about the red heifer. They have the altar ready to go. This is the news today that I saw. Um, in a West Bank settlement, Israelis tend red, red cows and plan the third temple. They're meeting today in Shiloh, which had the altar of the Lord for a long time. They're meeting today to talk about when to do this red heifer and how to go, these red heifers and how to go about it. So they're literally, they're ready to go. So this is crazy because just like the thumbnail of this video, the sacrifice happens first and then... The third temple's built. The temple that the Antichrist will stand in and declare to be God. So there's many Christians who... Some Christians say things like that this will... The confusion lies when because the Jewish people are still expecting a Messiah. They don't accept Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ. And then when they hear them saying, we need to build the temple, then it'll send Messiah. Christians who don't understand the full picture of Bible prophecy hear that, and they say, Jesus is coming back then. That means Jesus is coming back. That doesn't mean Jesus is coming back. Prophecy lays out very clearly a lot of stuff happens before Jesus comes back. Not good stuff. And they need to, people really need to grasp this concept. It's extremely clear in scripture. So yes, this third temple will usher in Jesus coming back sooner than, than not. I mean, because this is something that pretty much in my opinion, has to happen prophetically before Jesus even comes back. So yes, this moves the process along, but this that same concept that somehow some Christians are saying, like, this is good, yay, this means Jesus is coming back. This is, this is like saying, yay, the Antichrist is here, and yay, people are getting marks in their hands and their heads, Jesus is coming back soon. Which there's a reason and a way to respond that way when that happens, but you can tell there's a divide of confusion within Christians. So the process that is going to happen. The process of prophecy is that Jesus doesn't come back until a lot of stuff happens. Anybody who doesn't know the full picture of Jesus' second coming should read Matthew 24. A lot of stuff happens. Famines, pestilence, nation versus nation, the great tribulation, the beginning of sorrows and the great tribulation. These things happen. And then, and then, in verse 29 in Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is completely opposite to what some Christians who don't understand prophecy are saying, where they say, 
The third temple is going to be built. The Messiah is coming. He's going to bring peace to the earth. And there's going to be great times. This is not what happens. This is not what happens. God may give us times of reprieve. It feels like we're almost in one now, really, for sure. From 2020 to now, things have been better. But this doesn't mean that Messiah is coming and things are going to be better. Jesus isn't going to come back and make the earth all better and everyone's just going to get along. When Jesus comes, Revelation also tells us exactly this too. Revelation 19, everything before 19 happens before Jesus comes. The fall of Babylon the Great. Uh, Mystery Babylon, the bulls, the trumpets, the judgments of God pouring out upon the earth. Now, this is where people get in the different, you know, the different talk of, will there be a rapture? Is the church taken out? And that is just a different subject. But the point of the whole matter is that Jesus is not coming back to make everything nice and happy for the world. He's coming back to pour out the judgment on the earth because look at how wicked the earth is and how many people reject the truth of God. This is what's happening next. My, uh, in the comments here, do you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture? Most of my life I've been, I've been post-tribulation or maybe mid-even tribulation, but the more I've looked into prophecy, I do understand how some people say there could be a pre-tribulation it makes sense with certain verses, but then certain verses make sense, like Jesus saying, I could come at any moment. And like, don't act as if your master is not coming at any moment. Why would Jesus say that if it couldn't happen at any moment? So I understand both perspectives, and I just trust in the Lord Jesus to do whatever he decides to do. So this is just the important concept and the port important timeline of this. These red heifers are going to be sacrificed and they are going to be, the ashes of them are going to be used to purify the third temple, to purify what's inside the third temple, and to purify the priests that are going to serve in the third temple. Thank you for the super chat, fully on vault. Appreciate that. God bless you. So, so guys, this is the timeline of it. These heifers are sacrificed. This is why this is insane to see, because when these heifers are eventually sacrificed, then they have the ability to purify the third temple and the priest, which actually they're going to probably do on the Mount of Olives. They've been saying that. They say that it, it makes sense according to Jewish tradition, so that's what they're probably going to do. This just sets the stage for 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 to happen. And also, again, like I was saying, Matthew 24. I mean, some of these things I harp so much, but you have to know these things to understand what's happening in the future. Jesus says in Matthew 24, in verse 15, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. But those who are on the housetops not go back down into their house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So here we know that some of the elect will still be on the earth during the tribulation. This could be part of the 144,000 and those who are witnessing to people. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to not see what see all of this happen and people to not realize, wow, Jesus and the Bible were real. Even if there was a rapture, people would still be getting saved during this time. So there's a case to be made for both. People are always going to be divided on that issue until that day happens. But what's important to understand here is for, this is before the verse that I read earlier about Jesus coming back. So we have this all happening. For great tribulation will be on the earth, such as has not been seen since the beginning of time. Then every person in Matthew 29 will see Jesus coming back. These red heifers in the third temple is not going to usher in the coming back of Jesus Christ like he's coming back and making the world a happy place for us all to get along in. Just like when Joe Rogan and Aaron Rodgers are talking on their po on Joe's podcast about Jesus coming back. Well, it'd be good if he came back. It'd be 
It'd be nice if he came back before the election. Jesus could come back. Well, I'm grateful to hear Joe saying things like that and hopefully moving more in the direction to realizing the Bible isn't just allegories or stories of truth, but literally the absolute truth of God. Uh, but when Jesus comes back, it's not going to be happy-go-lucky for people. If you are not accepting Jesus Christ before he comes back in the clouds and you see him, you will be rejected. The wrath of God will be poured out on you. People who reject Jesus will spend eternity in the place that was designed for the devil and his angels, the pit of hell. And that's the bottom line truth. So again, I'm making this video mainly for anybody who is confused on the purposes of these red heifers. I want to share this with this uh, this brother um, who said, well, this guy who said this, I hope he becomes a brother believing in the truth of Jesus Christ, not the plagiarized version in the Quran. that um, this is not going to send Messiah Jesus when the Jew... <laughs> These gatherings, like in that video I posted, where you have this Jewish guy standing right there saying, this is going to bring Messiah. Then you have the Christian guy saying, I look at these red cows as if they're like the blood of Jesus going to send Jesus Christ. They're not talking about the same person. Eventually they will be because in Revelation 1, or sorry, Revelation 19, when Jesus comes back, he comes back on the cloud and it says that all those who, even those who pierced him will look on him and they'll start to realize that they'll realize that this was the Messiah. So there's definitely a cause and a case to be made that a lot of this prophecy surrounds Jerusalem and Israel because God has covenants with these people and they still reject him. And that's why when you read Matthew 24, it's saying those in Judea flee to the mountains and talking about this stuff because it's directed towards these people. It's for the whole world, but it's very much directed towards Jerusalem and Israel and the Jewish people, in my opinion. And so that's what we'll see. But when the Jewish people are saying Messiah is coming, he's going to bring an age of peace, they're not talking about Jesus. There's going to be this false man of peace who will come, and all the world will fall for his lies until he declares himself to be God, the abomination of desolation spoken of in Matthew 24 originally in the book of Daniel. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 describes this clear as day. We'll read actually 3 through 4. Let no one deceive you in any way, for it will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction or perdition, is revealed. He will oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he will sit in the, himself in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God. This is why this is such a dangerous time when people are saying, Messiah is coming, he's going to bring peace to the world. This is who's coming next. This man of lawlessness, this man of deception, who will bring such great deceptions that everyone would be deceived unless your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The great delusion, the greatest delusion of all time. This person will be healed, healed of a deadly head wound, performing satanic they're satanic in nature, miracles that look like good miracles, bringing the world together, bringing peace to the Middle East. I mean, everybody, you're, it'll get to the point where they will be killing people who go opposed, opposite of him, who oppose him, because he's so, it seems like he has all the answers. This is when the Christians eventually will be getting their heads cut off because they don't believe and they don't worship him like he demands here, told to us in 2 Thessalonians 2.4. So this is what the prophecy lays out. This is the clearest understanding of how this prophecy will come, in my opinion. It, it fits in together perfectly. So we must keep our eyes open for this to happen. Hard times come. The tribulation comes. There's a possibility that the believers in Jesus Christ are gone before it gets really bad. Then we have people, for sure, elect still on the earth getting saved whether it's all of us or not, debatable. But all this happens, then the Antichrist declares to be God in the temple. Then terrible judgment is poured out and hard times on the earth. Tribulation like the world has never seen. Then, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. Then the sign of the Son of Man 
will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is the timeline of prophecy. This is very important to keep this in the realm of perspective, and so I hope that this helps. Thank you guys, Platinum, and everybody in the chat. I wanted to just kind of have this video be focused on exactly what this is to help anybody who was confused on this process of the red heifers. So I hope this helps. I'm going to end this here. We'll, I'll try to hop on here soon and we'll do another hangout where we just kind of talk about current events and stuff going on and then we'll kind of hang out there. But I wanted that to stay in relation to the topic here. But I'll, <clears throat> also one thing I can't remember if I said it in the beginning, I will never comment in a video or post on a YouTube comment and say, message me on WhatsApp. There's these people who goes or go around or Telegram or anywhere. I will never ask you to message me anywhere. I mean, there's been very few cases when I've told people you can message me. Well, not few, but I have told people they can message me on Instagram or through my email. But I never would say message me on WhatsApp or Telegram. And there's people who comment these long deceptive comments about saying someone has demonic oppression, you have to email me asking for donations to an orphanage. Those people are deceivers, they're scammers, there's lies. If anyone ever asks you for a WhatsApp number or a Telegram account, or especially WhatsApp, don't believe that person. They're a scammer and a liar. So be on the lookout for that. And they'll have like names like my name with my, my channel's icon. So you have to be alert. Don't trust anybody asking for um, WhatsApp numbers. Slingy, I do have a Discord. You can the the links for it are on my main videos on Sling and Stone, my main channel Sling and Stone. And if you go in the descriptions there, um, uh, yeah, then you can find the link to that. And fully on Volts, I will be coming out with an Eclipse video very soon. Got it all researched and recorded. So I'm gonna keep this video on the topic, guys. Thanks for hopping on. God bless. Have a good day, and thanks for hopping on. See ya.